All right. Next up on our lightning rounds is Betsy Davis. She is from Mound Ridge Public Library in Kansas. Population served 2,000. Uh, talk about growth mindset and staff development. So uh, thank you for having me. Again, my name is Betsy Davis. I am a tiny library director in Mound Ridge, Kansas. And um, we're going to be talking about something that has been kind of a buzzword in the education system for quite some time, um, growth mindset. Mm. So the first thing to know um, is that, so Carol Dweck is the um, originator of the growth mindset. And she um, says that there are two kinds of mindsets, growth mindset and fixed mindset. And a fixed mindset assumes that all of your character, intelligence, creative ability are all static. Um, so this is somebody who has a fixed mindset is tries to avoid failure and to maintain the appearance of being smart or um, or strong or fast or whatever. So they're trying to only do things that they are strong in to uh, keep up appearances. Um, however, somebody with a growth mindset is quite the opposite, where they thrive and enjoy challenges and views failure as a springboard for, um, for stretching existing abilities. And so what was really interesting when I'm reading Dweck um, is she actually says that both of these mindsets can be present in a person at the same time. So for example, um, myself as an example, um, in baking, I really enjoy baking and I do a lot of experimentation and I like to share my food with people and I like to hear feedback and through their feedback and my experimentation, I have become a better baker. Now, some of the things, especially in the beginning, what I would serve was not good, but I am getting a lot better. There, I have a growth mindset where I'm willing to experiment and try different things. Um, where I have a fixed mindset is in chemistry. I am not strong in chemistry and I do not actively engage people um, in, in conversations about chemistry because I don't want to look dumb. Um, so in the library, we find fixed mindsets when we hear things like, oh, I have an e-reader question and immediately, instead of trying to help the patron, you defer it to the techie or the younger um, employee because you know of course they know technology better than you do instead of trying um, and helping them. Um, a library example of growth mindset would be assisting a patron in gathering genealogical research and using multiple um, resources that you may not have used before but you're willing to to try and help them and kind of walk them um, through the process in, in finding um, those resources. So my thought because libraries have long been a place for information retrieval and where people go to find out more information on anything is, is a library. And so they're kind of an inherent place of growth. Um, so why shouldn't the workers at the library also have a growth um, mindset? But how do we get library workers to embrace this idea? Well, that is where motivation comes in. So staff as learners, um, you know, if if you expect the status quo, you're going to get the status quo. And um, many people are really scared of failing and are doomed to stay average because of that fear. But if you encourage um, learning and encourage growth mindset, I think that you can have really active learners and grow your profession. So if you look at Hersberg's hygiene theory, um, he suggests that making sure that all backgrounds are the same. So giving people um, a basis, a baseline for growth. So getting rid of policies that inhibit um, learning or getting rid of um, other things that make their jobs a little bit more difficult really open up the idea um, that patron, that patron, excuse me, that employees will have um, motivation and will have satisfaction with their jobs. Um, so something else that is suggested by in a book called Drive by Daniel Pink is in goal setting. So a lot of us have um, goals like annual reviews where there are performance objectives. So you need to increase X, Y, Z by this date. But that, if you don't meet them, then you fail, and there's not really um, 
anyway, there's there's that failure if you don't meet those goals. So Daniel Pink suggests that instead of doing performance objectives or performance learning um, goal set, instead of excuse me, instead of performance goal setting, to do learning goal settings. And so instead of having I will, you know, achieve X Y Z by you know March first, it's I will learn more about how to use different e-reader formats. And so then you're kind of giving yourself grace to fail um, by having a learning objective rather than having um, performance objectives. So Dweck found that when children uh, focus more on measuring themselves in performance, like um, grade cards, that failure is more likely to provoke helplessness. But when children focused on learning, failure was more likely to provoke continued effort. And I thought that was really interesting and think that you could probably translate that from um, child learner learners to adult learners. So go with growth. How do you um, motivate and inspire, um, foster desire to learn? So first what we need to do as um, library directors or library leaders or just employees in general, um, listen for those fixed mindset language use. So I can't do that. I didn't grow up with computers. I'm not good at math. Um, those are all things that suggest that nope, I'm I'm shut down. I'm not going. I'm not willing to learn. I'm not willing to um, improve in in whatever way you're asking me to to improve on. But instead, um, try to go and encourage growth mindset kind of language. Like I'm not sure I can do it now but with a little time and effort, it is attainable. And this is something you can actually coach um, your employees with um, or, your, or yourself. Um, you can say, well, I might not be good at it now, or you know what, you took baby steps, you're doing a little bit better than you did last time, I bet you'll be even better um, next week. Use um, incremental language when you're doing um, language of growth and in goal setting. Um, they have found that to be uh, very helpful as well. So what have I tried? Um, one of the big questions I have asked is what happens if it fails? Um, I think there's a lot of stigma about, you know, failure and how it's just a terrible thing and we don't want to deal with it. But a lot of times the stakes are not that high. <laughs> um, you know, like, so what happens if a program fails? If, you know, only five kids show up and you're expecting 20? Well, you know, you learn that maybe we didn't promote it the way we should have, or maybe the topic wasn't what the kids were actually interested in. Um, so turn it around to be like, oh, I, this is a perceived failure, but really, what did we learn from it? What happens if it fails? You know, we're probably still okay. Um, give autonomy to what is learned. So um, one of the ways that motivates, one of the things that motivates people is, according to um, Daniel Pink, is giving autonomy. So letting people actually learn what they're interested in learning. Now, um, I guess, you know, in, in a library setting, there's a lot of, um, you can have a lot of wiggle room between, you know, learning about reader advisory or database usage or patron, um, you know, customer service and things like that. But letting, giving the, the, the staff um, some autonomy in what they're learning rather than saying, you will do this. Um, now, there are some times when that is not an option, but, you know, giving autonomy, I think, um, can really help with motivation. Um, praise effort and strategy, not success. This goes back to the learning setting or goals rather than the performance goals. You know, like maybe, you know, your, your staff is getting better or yourself, you are getting better, but you're not quite where you want to be. But it's, if you could look at, oh, I am doing better than I was, then that keeps you motivated to continue um, going. Also, make sure you get buy-in when you're we're doing things like this. You know, all having somebody model it is, is one thing, but making sure the staff um, can, can also see it and can start using the same language of, of, of growth. Um, and then model curiosity and failure. And um, this is something that is incredibly hard to do. Um, maybe not modeling curiosity, but modeling failure. And so um, this comes from the book Radical Candor by Kim Scott, and it encourages, she encourages sharing mistakes or things that didn't quite go as expected. Um, and she encourages um, praising and self-admitted um, critique. 
So at staff means I just started doing this, asking my staff, so what, what, um, what went well this week? And then what didn't go as expected? So the what didn't go as expected is our failure, not really failure, but just something that we didn't do. It didn't quite go as we as we'd wanted. Um, and sharing it for yourself, saying, "Oh, I tried this and it was awful." Um, that is really hard to do um, because it, it it just is. You know, admitting that you are <laughs> failing is is a tricky thing. But I think that if if you continue at it and and you are um, very open about failure and open to um, and supportive of staff to get some education and to grow and learn um, different skills, then I think it can be very beneficial for both the staff and for the library as a whole. Um, and these are the resources um, that I, I used. I read um, quite a bit. And this actually is my exercise in growth mindset. I listened to Motivating Your Team with Lauren Hayes, a podcast back in September, and I thought, ooh, that's really interesting. I want to know more. Mm -hmm. And then I pushed myself a little bit and thought, okay, so I have a learning objective. I'm going to learn more about this. And then I saw um, the big talk from Tiny Libraries, and I thought, that's going to be my goal, as I'm going to learn enough that I can present my findings um, in, in February. And mm -hmm. so this is my exploration and my own growth mindset. Awesome. Well, we're and glad you're able to do it. <laughs> so, um, we feel free to to like us on the Facebook or follow us on Instagram. We put up some pretty cool things, and um, I guess questions. I hope I didn't go too far over. I went way over. I'm no, sorry. No, you're fine. No, it's all good. Um, I think that was great, especially. Um, going outside of your comfort zone. I know it's a thing that I lots of people have issues with. I say yeah. things like, oh, I don't do math. I'm, it's, I, it's, you sound, you sound like you're talking about me. <laughs> um, take a bit, but you can. <laughs> yeah, great perspective on, on failure. As it, mm -hmm. so, um, so people have asked, the slides will be available afterwards, so all those resources you had there, if you didn't catch that, don't worry about it. We'll include the slides when we do the archive the recording yeah. later. Um, all right, so let's move on to, so thank you so much, Betsy. That was awesome, Some great info. We got some lots of comments saying great information, great perspective, that um, success. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much.